majority of Hungarians still do not use the internet. But in mass, their quality of life, because of the World Wide Web, would climb to that of the happier digital minority. Lonely seniors, handicapped, disadvantaged region or village residents, and the poor. All these together in the millions remain outside the 100,000 users. Those outside still do not know what the World Wide Web could mean to them, what this technology could give them. They still do not know the possibilities to broaden to this new road. Social potential, work, recognition, a better life. At the end of 2007, a public civil organization, Forum of the Hungarian IT Organizations for Information Society, Inforum, came out into the open to the political players and told them that not bridging the digital gap will not be tolerated. In Hungary, where such European Union initiatives are rarely known, many organizations and key people lent their support to the Inforum movement. 2008 should be the year of e-inclusion. In 2008, the political parties came together, just like the civil organizations and some businesses. The activities multiplied. Web pages for seniors started popping up one after the other. Education possibilities appeared, and affordable internet connections were started. Whoever has encountered the internet at work or at school does not consider the informatic society as strange. The Hungarian e-inclusion says to them, Help those on the other side of the digital gap so they can cross over into the luckier side, be they seniors, living in small villages, or physically impaired. The goal is that those who are foreigners to informatics will become partners, and this will reduce the differences in Hungarian society. The Internet offers new possibilities for democracy and personal expression, in which everyone, every opinion, and every life can be important and treated with respect. Hungary, beyond its borders, cities, villages, and everywhere. On May 17, at the Millenarian Park, on the day of the Informatics Society, Inform organized the first reception for those over 50 dedicated to the widespread use of the Internet. It was only possible to sign up for this event via the Internet. Following registration was a short greeting and an informatics cabaret, the mind boggles, about the Internet. And then came rock and roll, cha-cha-cha, and the unforgettable golden oldies. Did this event live up to expectations? The fact that in Hungary, 600 people over 50 signed up through the Internet is a miracle. And it's more so a miracle that there were three people over 80, 20 registered who were over 70. There exists in Hungary an elite strata of society which wants to preserve its vitality, its mental agility, and they use modern technology for this. Dombi Gabor, Secretary General in Forum. Good evening. I'm interested in how you're enjoying this function. It's better than the Vidam Simpad. Why? I work there. Oh, hello again. You recognize me. How are you with the internet? Great. We're great at it. When did you start using the internet? Two years ago? Maybe three? I don't know exactly. How did you get started? In Budapest Muvele Deshi Haz, they organized a course there. I read about it in Ui Buda News, and I had to wait one and a half years before there was a place for me on the course to learn about the Internet. I think I completed in 2005. How did you find out about tonight's event? We got an invitation. You then had to register on the Internet. All grannies immediately registered. Can you imagine your lives without the Internet now that you're familiar with it? No. No. What do you use the Internet for exactly? Have my own web blog. Blog? Who set it up? I did. Congratulations. You must really be an expert. Who did you learn from? Where did you learn? From my children and grandchildren. Petko András, Member of Parliament. I'm happy that they've organized this event, and I'm even happier that there are more and more people who use the Internet in their everyday lives. A 63-year-old lady came to my office building during office hours once. She told me her daughter was working in France. She asked, Mr. Member of Parliament, what will I do since up until this time my daughter has visited me every week? I could talk to her, have conversations with her, and really keep in touch with her. 
And you know what? That's what kept me going. So I asked the lady if she had a spare 100,000 forms. She said she did. So I told her to get herself a computer and subscribe to the cheapest internet provider. And you know what? That's what she did. Two months later, she came back to my office and told me, Mr. Member of Parliament, do you know what has happened? Thanks to informatics, I can talk to my daughter not merely once a week, but every day. I can talk to my daughter online, and this way, another person was able to become a member of the informatics community. Using a phrase I coined, she became a net citizen. How are you enjoying the party? Great. Is it a good initiative? Yes. I've had my computer for five years now. I email, chat with the girls. We use webcams, as it's written in red. Do you have a webcam or two? Of course. You can find everything. We look like pilots with headphones on and a mouth base. Then comes the camera, picture, talk and chat. I've got a laptop. I don't need a separate one because I've got a laptop with a built-in one. I just look into the camera and I can see my friend. What other programs will be organized in the year of cyberspace in Hungary, which will be organized by you? From here, we will get into the internet boat in which politicians, computer representatives, and members of the public will hopefully argue vehemently about what the task is, whose task it is, what, in order to be able to narrow the digital gap and increase the use of the internet. The internet boat will arrive at Saz Halambata, where we will participate in the Telecenter conference to encourage Telecenter to proceed with what they are doing to a narrow digital gap, and the digital May will be rounded off by a grandparents and grandchildren competition. The internet boat is about the year of e-inclusion. We have tried to invite representatives from the government and also professional organizations, as well as a third from market forces. This year the government is putting in more effort after a couple of rather stagnant years. So we hope something will actually get started soon. Also something that is new on the internet boat is that the Parliament Informatics Committee are holding a plenary session. There's been a great deal of interest in this and it has come from many places, both from the public and the private sector. Diyoshi Tamash. We've talked about the changing paradigm in information technology and how the government handles information technology. What are the most important things to know about the paradigm changes? Boya Ferenc, e-government commissioner. The important thing is that the state, like the private sphere, has to serve the customers or public. And this service has to be designed to suit the public's needs. You have talked about different action plans. Can you summarize what these are and what the task government faces and how it intends to deal with these? The most important thing is the legal framework. As an act of parliament on electronic public administration has to be enacted. After that, you have to establish infrastructure in accordance with the law. There is a need for a complex infrastructure to ensure electronic public services. After that, the public has to be taught how to use these programs for electronic administration. On the other hand, they will learn it by themselves, or on the other hand, if they can't, they can get some help in different forms for their individual cases. Or other professionals who are knowledgeable in specific areas can help. So we are trying to shape this electronic service, so that from this the general public, or anyone in general, will be able to use this without any extra assistance. Hungarian party politics, how can it handle the year of cyberspace? Parliament has addressed itself to the task, which is basically to have the digital gap by 2010, to generate another 3 million users. Marfai Peter, informatics committee leader, had decided to establish a committee that will deal with this cyberspace. The establishment of this committee will be conducted in several phases. The first of these is a five-party negotiation, which has already been concluded. A consensus has already been reached, which created a basis for this agreement. It's been put into words in government declaration number 5,333 and this declaration can be found on the website of Parliament. It was passed by all the committees, the Economic Committee and the Constitutional Committee, and it's waiting to be put on the agenda of Parliament. Our goal, of course, is to have another 3 million Internet users and to create the necessary conditions for this. The committee will have a definite role. 
meghatározó szerepet fog betölteni ez a bizonyos. There are more than 4 million of our fellow citizens who can't access the internet on a daily basis. So there is a significant digital gap and the narrowing of this can be aided greatly by e-inclusion. The e-inclusion program. Nitroi Zsolt, Member of Parliament. As we know, the EU has declared 2008 the year of cyberspace. We created the government declaration as a result of a five-party negotiation. The first step is for the parliament to pass it. Once this happens, of course, it has to be filled with content. What we consider the most important are the opportunities in the community to be created, because some of these have been closed down in the last few years. We can install these with information technology, and through this the gap can be narrowed, as of course I mentioned in the beginning. Molnar Béla, Member of Parliament. We Christian Democrats think that society is responsible for each and every member of society, and if we build a digital society, and we enter a new world, we cannot leave those behind who cannot be a member of this particular society, uh, for one reason or another. We have a responsibility to create the opportunity for everyone to enter the digital society. This is the eighth grandchild-grandparent informatics competition. I can see many familiar faces and some new faces. Today's competition is special. However, those who have already participated in this competition will have no difficulties doing the tasks. We have deliberately planned rather difficult tasks. Students were testing it last night and felt it was far too easy and could do them in five minutes flat. So we have increased the difficulty of the tasks. But it's worth it, I think. Who tempted your grandfather to come here today? You? No, it was his idea to come here. Was it easy to convince you to come? Yes, it was easy. And people said it, and I thought it was a good competition, and I was curious what we could achieve. How did it go? I think it went well, but there were things we could only do by guesswork. And the search engines helped a lot. How could you search the web? Because they could see you were good at using the various search engines. I'm used to using the internet at home, because sometimes they give us homework to do from the internet. This is for extra credit. As a grandparent, in your view, is it a good thing that children are using the internet more and more? I think that definitely, as long as they're not just playing games, so it's not just about downloading games and playing, but it also increases knowledge. I'm old, but I can't survive without the internet. Have you participated in this before? No, this is my first time. My mother saw it on the internet and thought we could sign up because my grandfather used to be an informatics teacher and I'm very good at informatics. So the choice of which grandparents should participate was obvious. Naturally. And how do you feel about working with your grandchild? Excellent. He types quicker than me, and this was very advantageous while searching for things. And the winners are Varga Shandor and Rochani Baldijar. A big round of applause for them. You should come too. Balint Akos, National Development Director. There are a great deal of people in Hungary who have never before encountered informatics and they've never before used it as a tool. I think that they really need to be helped and they will be helped with events such as today's. You find those people who don't know informatics and you really just have to show them what it's really all about. We are working to change things now. Informatics is not just a vertical type of education, it really has to reach every aspect of work. The Titan program is a good example of this. It is partially Microsoft, and another part of it is the Prime Minister, and a third part is Boynai Gordon, and these people are all backing the program. Um, it tries to renew the teaching of informatics and professional education. What it's really trying to do is to mold in respect of the market state as well into a well-worked-out joint program. 
Cooperative agreement was signed by the Hungarian EU Development Advisorial Board, the Hungarian government, representative of the political parties, and the Hungarian Private Sphere Development Foundation. The main purpose of this contract is the support of the Titan Plan. The general program outline was proposed by the world's largest software company, Microsoft. This Titan project is really a public-private partnership. It's a number of companies in our industry, Microsoft and smaller companies and other bigger companies, companies who are partners and companies who are competitors. But we are all brought together by a desire to see the digital gap reduced in size here in Hungary and have that translate into real growth. And we're pleased for the support and interest and leadership of the Hungarian government in really driving digital literacy in this country. Trajko Laszlo, director, Microsoft Hungary. Hungary, in terms of professionals who complete higher education, is one of the front runners in Europe. First of all, the national economy is satisfied with freshly graduated professionals. Uh, but at the same time, it can be said that we're lagging behind in Europe concerning lifelong learning programs. The real problem behind this is that after a very strong start, there's been a great fallback. Um, however, informatics provided the biggest information source that outdates the quickest. In other words, it needs to be renewed. Every five to ten years, there's a complete change in what technologies are used, which is why that it is absolutely critical that we introduce a lifelong learning program. The initial reason for creating the Titan program was to finance this and to help maintain the necessary informatics background for all its users, whether they be managers or whether they be informaticians. I really feel it necessary that I add that we are targeting not just large companies, as a matter of fact we're not targeting them, but small and medium-sized companies, because of course the larger companies and these multinational companies use a great amount of their income for the training of their staff. Merényi Adam Education Program Manager Microsoft Microsoft has free study material, namely digital literacy which can be accessed without a charge by anybody. It teaches the basics of how to turn on the computer or how to write a document and the basics of making tables too. This material already forms the basis of many programs we've already started. For example, it is the basis of e-advisor and the e-advisor program. Information society mentor programs use this as well. And we closely cooperate with the Neumann Janos Computer Science Society, which uses this material in its different training sessions. Since multinational companies support this, uh, today as a Hungarian example, many other European companies are putting this on their agenda. And we are still not at the implementation stage, uh, but are creating the program still. I really believe that they've now noticed us. The Hungarian e-inclusion adds color both technically and socially to the Wi-Fi Village initiative, which in a wireless form supports access to the Internet for residents for small villages. Nero András. We are now present in 102 languages. Well, that's about how many. And 1,500 households use this system. But I think it's difficult to give an answer in numbers. It's really about children who can use the computer. And they've already been using the computer. It is now possible to use the computer in their own homes. And it's difficult to gauge what this will mean for those children's future and for the future. Uh, they'll be able to read and write well, since it is necessary for using emails, and they use emails on the computer. For searching, one of the things that's necessary is for everyone to learn English. Many people have come to us saying they need a level of English. And in the villages before, they never really felt there was a need to learn English. 
I would say I'd rather speak about this through numbers, because in this way we can show you what the results of the program and what the aims of the program are. The computer is not about itself. We can't communicate directly to the computer, but to each other, through the computer. Those people can communicate with the world through computers, and for those people it opens up a window. And those people never had a window before, they lived previously locked in these villages. Not even birds go there. Many of these places I'm talking about have no schools, they don't have post offices, and many of them don't even have buses. Suddenly they're just one click away from the world from Paris, New York, Budapest, Mishkots, it doesn't matter, anywhere. We had an experiment where some students were trained by us. We taught them computing, and then we offered them jobs where their computer skills were necessary. But they looked at us and they said, no thanks, we don't want to go away. We feel right at home, right where we are. The Neumann Janos Computer Science Society Digital Equality Conference from the end of last year gave its support to those activities and experiences that related to e-inclusion. Alföldi István, Neumann Janos Computer Science Society. It's about whether we can live with the reality that is with us. Even if we can't change or influence that reality, we have to do everything possible so that more people, or everyone, realizes the unarguable living advantage, realizes the disadvantages, and in any way possible discover how to avoid these disadvantages and how to use the advantages. And digital equality is simply knowing the infrastructure needs. Like I've said before, just a little more condensed, infrastructure, motivation, knowledge. Cepeli George, Director, Office of the Prime Minister. European trends are moving in that direction, that Europe will only be competitive with America or China if at least a portion of the citizens are able to partake of this, independent of psychological or physical state, or if they're from a disadvantaged village or less disadvantaged village. And that's why Hungary, when it became a part of this movement, I believe made a very good decision, because those kinds of markets forces have already made more than 50% of the population a part of the information society. And this has been accented by centralized steps that bring about a result that by 2011 at least two-thirds of the country will be a near or near being e-citizens. The Hungarian e-inclusion and informs activity success can be seen in the Europeans using recognition through an e-inclusion award, which was received for the grandchild grandparent informatics competition, which has been held since 2003. In 2006, the leaders of the European Union set a goal to have the digital gap on the continent by 2010. We can see that this goal is currently impossible in Hungary. But we have reason to believe that hundreds of thousands of our fellow countrymen can connect to the Internet Users Camp. Hopefully, most of those will come from the disadvantaged. But for that, we need your help. Wouldn't you show the Internet to a non-user acquaintance? Perhaps to your parents.